Hello everybody, welcome to this video of myself and my colleague Zoe. Hello. So, what are we up to today, Zoe? Well, I'll be talking to Simon Bates, saxophone player extraordinaire. We'll be giving him three of our entry-level baritone saxophones to give them a playthrough and tell us a little bit about the ways in which they differ. Absolutely, and I'm here to have a look at the outfits, what do they come with, the case, the mouthpiece, any little upgrades you might want to consider as well. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. Simon, thanks for coming along and being our expert tester. Uh, what do you think of our new studio? Oh, it's absolutely amazing. And what a privilege to be the first one to, uh, to, to do some videos in there with these, these amazing saxophones. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I can't say enough about, about this incredible premises. Um, it's not just a shop. There's so much going on here. Uh, really, it's, it's really worth popping down, just having a look and opening your mouth in amazement at, at what Dorks have done. It's superb. Uh, you know, there, there is really no other space like it for music in the world. So you come, heard it come here and see. First. It. Oh, Thank yeah. you, Simon. Well, today you are going to test for us three entry level baritone saxophones, um, roughly at the £3,000 mark at the moment. Uh, we've got the Con, we've got the Eastman, and the Windcraft. So we're going to hear a little bit of each of them first before, I know you've got some strong opinions on these. I have indeed. Yes. yes. Of course, always got strong opinions. Yeah. So you've got the con there? Yeah. Okay, let's go for it. All right. <laughs> Simon, I know you've got a lot to say about all three of those instruments. I have indeed, yes. But before we get into it, we're just going to cut to Sam in the shop, who's going to tell us a little bit about what each outfit comes with. Thank you, Zoe. Right, I'm going to have a look at these different cases and outfits to give you a little bit more background about what you actually get for your money. First up is the Con, and this is actually the lightest of the three cases. Here comes the geek moment, it's 7.4 kilos which will mean something to you when I tell you the weight of a couple of the others. So, uh, it's lightweight, nice couple of wheels, handles, etc. on the front, flappy flappy, and a zip. So all in all, pretty protective. Now, in here we've got a molded, sort of hardish uh, polystyrene with black covering, as usual, as you would find in a case. In terms of the accessories, there is a reasonably padded straight, uh, sling, with a hook. Now, I'm more of a man who likes his snap hooks, uh, but this is more of an open hook, so that might be something you want to think about upgrading, potentially, if you were to buy the Con. And finally, before we get on to the uh, other two, uh, the Con mouthpiece. Now, this is actually unbranded, unstamped, unnumbered, which in my 20-plus uh, years of doing this is never usually a good sign. However, I've blown this, and actually it's pretty lively. It's got quite a high baffle, little step in it, 
and it's really quite fruity. So of these three, uh, weirdly, although it shouldn't be, uh, this is uh, probably the most exciting of the mouthpieces to play, and it comes with a standard ligature and cap. Right, that's the con, let's get on to the other two. Okay, next up is the Eastman, and I'd like to welcome you all back to 1990, when I think this case was probably designed. It's old school, ABS shell, nice big wheels, I'll give them that, but it is a little bit old fashioned feeling. Sorry Eastman, with the clasps. Anyway, let's get to the accessories. There is a Eastman Protégé mouthpiece. Again, not numbered and it's plastic. Uh, I've had a look, I reckon it's around between a five and a six. Fairly big chamber inside, so it blows fairly full um, and a fairly long facing. So for the person making their first steps on baritone, it would be an okay start. It comes with a leather ligature and cap. Uh, with a little one screw. You may have seen other brands making these uh, called Rovner and that is indeed one of those. Final bits on the Eastman is a padded strap which is quite nice and it has the snap hook which I, as I say is really useful. There is however a fairly light plastic on the end of here so if I was being pernickety I would say you might want to think about upgrading that to a metal hook which on baritone is generally suggested. Final thing, they give you a Legere Signature Strength 2 reed, which is quite nice. That's worth about 30, 40 quid, something like that. And uh, with that protégé mouthpiece, it might make a nice little combination. So, if you want to head back to the 1990s and a very heavy 8.9 kilo case, the Eastman is the one for you. Right, finally, we've got the Wincraft. This is another one of the hard shell ABS style function over form, if you don't mind me saying, it is okay, but it's not particularly beautiful, but it will protect your saxophone. It does have wheels, listen to them, good spin, uh, but the Eastman spin is better, and the Eastman wheels are bigger, and I decided I could tackle a small step with that Eastman case, and everybody here laughed at me. So let's have a look inside the Wingcraft case. Mouthpiece-wise, this comes with an Ebonite Wingcraft Etude mouthpiece, which is made by JJ Babbitt in the USA, which means what? It means it's good. We did a lot of research when we were making this with Babbitt. Babbitt are the people that make Link, Mayer, and all these fantastic mouthpieces for the last few decades. This is designed to be like a Mayer. It's lively, it's fruity, it's got some good bottom end. And actually, although I mentioned earlier the con was quite fun, this is definitely the best of the mouthpieces in all of these. Uh, Rovner Lig and Cap sets it off. Now, strap-wise, you do just get a fairly basic neck strap as standard with the Wingcraft. And my final thought on all of these, before I throw back to the guys, is that do feel free to spend a little bit more money adding in a couple of extras. I would suggest a really nice padded strap or harness, depending on what you suit, and maybe getting yourself a decent baritone sax stand, and obviously you can explore mouthpieces and stuff in the future. Uh, but in terms of your first entry-level baritones, these will get you running with everything you need to get started. That's enough from me. Let's jump upstairs to Zoe and Simon. A bit worried I said they're upstairs, but that's where the room is. <laughs> so Simon, mm. your thoughts. So first off, you played the Con BS650. Yes. What do um, you think? Do, do you know what? I, I really wanted to love the Con because uh, um, I, I myself play a Con baritone saxophone. Um, from uh, 1933, oh, so wow. it's, um, yes. Don't look old enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sam used to do that. But, <laughs> anyway, um, so I, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm ambivalent about it. I have to be honest because um, it's the, the, for me the intonation wasn't quite as spot on as, as with the other two. Um, it's got a really good bright sound, but again. I would like a, a little bit more of a fuller sound. Um, okay. You know, I'll, I'll tell you which one I like best from, from the sound point of view uh, later. But, um, it, you know, it's, it's a great feeling saxophone. The key works OK, but perhaps for my big hands, a little bit delicate. Um, okay. I'm being very negative about it, but, you know, I, I mean, let's be honest. It's, we want it's, you to be honest. It, it's it's three, around £3,000. Yeah. So for that sort of money for a baritone, 
it's a, it's a great price. Yeah. Um, what are you looking for as an entry level? This is going to be your first baritone, right? Yeah. Um, what what would you be looking for? Do you think what's well, important? Well, I, th I think you need you know obviously the you know the, the quality of manufacture is very important because um, you know you can get some very very cheap instruments which are quite delicate. Baritone is is one of those instruments that you know the the, the rods are so long and everything is everything is is kind of really. Um, you know, pronounced on here. Um, the, the smaller saxophones, of course, you know, nobody wants to drop a saxophone, but it's very easy to, to, to dent rods and things. So what you're looking for is something that, that's quite substantial and well built. Um, yeah. You know, t I think it was the, the, the brightest, but perhaps not the richest of, 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 okay. of the, the saxophones. Okay. Um, but so yeah. moving on, if we hmm. go to the Eastman, what did you make of that one? Well, I was quite surprised because I've tried some other Eastman saxophones and not been quite as impressed as, as I thought I would. The, the, the baritone, I think, is really nice. I mean, again, like the con, you can see where they've cut a few corners, okay. um, the, the octave mechanism, the, the low A, you okay. know, very flat. Um, and... Um, you know, but the, the key work in the front of the instrument, I think, probably was, was my favourite. It was the easiest ah, okay. and most comfortable to play. Um, the sound, I would say, is richer and, and a little bit better than the, um, than the con, uh, but, you know, fairly close. Um, okay. You know, it de depends what, what you're looking for. Um, and, and again, you know, it's a substantially built instrument. It's, you know, pretty... Uh, um, would you say it, it's good value? Absolutely, I, th yeah. I think I think they're all good value. Okay. You know, um, it's amazing what you can get now. Well, yes, it is. I mean, um, in terms of quality. you know, as I say, professional baritone, you know, between ten and fifteen thousand yeah. pounds now. So, you know, to get one for three or thereabouts at time of recording um, is you know is, is pretty good. But yeah. um, you know, th these sort of instruments, I think, would would probably not just suit um, somebody who's starting off because let's face it, most people start off on a, on alto. Um, perhaps move to tenor yeah. and then you know find find baritone but uh, particularly someone who who is a, a, a doubler as we call it you know somebody who plays several instruments uh, you know any three of these instruments would, would be absolutely ideal um, and, and sit comfortably in the, the the budget of somebody you know a, a pro who does does shows and yeah. gets that call to say can you bring your Barry? Ooh. Oh, I need to go and you know, buy one. <laughs> which is, it, it's happened to me. You know, yeah. I, I used to borrow one from a friend of mine. You just have to pretend um, that you And then he sold it, one. so I had yeah. to buy one. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it, 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 you know, it, it's kind of a... For some people, the baritone can be an occasional use thing. Okay. For other people, it can be a real specialist thing. So yeah. perhaps if you're a baritone specialist, you will want to spend a bit more money than this. Yeah. Um, but uh, I wouldn't discount looking at these instruments anyway because, you know, everybody likes a bargain. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's be honest. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, so moving on to the Windcraft. Now, I did notice you having a lot of fun with that one in particular. Yeah, I mean, um, that's the one I've got on my lap at the moment. Um, in, terms of, in terms of build quality, I think this one is, is the best. Okay. Um, the, the octave mechanism and the, uh, the low air is, is a lot more substantial. It's nicely shaped at the back. Um, and um, I, I really like the design of this. The ergonomics are really good. Yeah. Um, the, uh, as I say, the key work perhaps is a little more delicate than the Eastman, which I, I preferred, but that, that's a personal thing. Um, and, um, you know, I found myself having to, to sort of uh, perhaps modify my fingering slightly for the G sharp. Uh, but that's, that's something you always get used to as, a, uh, as an instrumentalist. You know, you, you, um, you can't uh, pick up an instrument and immediately feel that, you know, yeah, this is absolutely the one for me. I'm going to, you know, yeah. you, you've got to try several and, and, and there, there will be little compromises because, you know, let, let's look at your hands. You're, you know, Tiny. you might play baritone in, 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 in comparison to me. So, yeah. you know, you, you, it's, it's kind of got to be a, a, a one size fits all type of thing. Um, okay. You know, they're not like shoes. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I mean, that would be your number one. This actually, yeah, for the, for the sound, the sound of this, it, 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 you know, um, yeah. it's just so rich. And for me, it sounds like a baritone should. Yeah. Um, you know, as I say, I'm coming from um, an old con uh, crossbar, which for me is the, you know, the epitome of, of, of what a baritone, baritone should be. And this I'm getting, you know, the, the most similar okay. uh, sound out of. Again, it's personal preference, you know, yeah. because lots of people might say, oh, yeah, but I like the con because it's, 
you know, it's a little bit lighter or... And maybe it's for an entry-level kind of person, that would suit them better because it's lighter. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, really what you've got to do when you're buying an instrument, um, you know, you can't just go, right, yeah, I think that's the best, let's, mm -hmm. let's buy that off the internet. You know, you... Um, different things are important to different people. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, you know, my considerations are going to be slightly different to other people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this would be my starting point for, okay. for a, a, um, a bargain Barry. Um, bargain Barry. Yes. There we go, the Wingcraft. <laughs> yes, bargain barking big baritone. Anyway, lots of bees. Um, no, that, I mean, as I say, all three are, are worth checking out because um, you know I can't I can't tell you that this is the best. It's the best one for me. You know. What we're saying is people should come to the shop and try it for themselves. Absolutely, we're saying that. <laughs> yes, I think that's very important. Yeah. Even if you have to get on a plane, come down to Dorks. It's amazing. Thanks, Simon. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.